how to compile a very, very old Windows executable from Linux. Hey guys, it's Heap and welcome to a no budget story of how I spared my friends a lot of pain and suffering. Essentially, they needed to compile this SBSMS thing, which is an audio stretching library and an executable. And they could get it working on Linux, but they needed a Windows executable, and that was a complete disaster. So if you just take a look at this, this is a modified structure, but originally the library uses auto tools on Linux, which is a disaster by itself, but on Linux it's fine. And they also have this Windows Visual Studio project, which as you can see is pretty old. Visual C++ 9, I think, came out in 2009. And obviously it absolutely did not work. I was told they tried like for over two days to get it compiling and they couldn't. So they summoned me and I agreed to help them. But since I don't have a Windows machine and they needed a Windows executable, I thought of the only obvious solution and that is cross compilation. Now, if you've touched MinGW, you're gonna think I'm insane. And I'd agree with you if I was gonna use MinGW, but no. I am going to use Clang. It's not a fully Linux purist way, because it requires access to a Visual Studio installation, but it's the way that works, and personally, from my experience, has the same compatibility as you're gonna have uh, compiling on Visual Studio. So how to get it done? Well, I just went ahead and copied and pasted a cross-compilation setup from Modular, which is my Counter-Strike hack. And essentially, it's this mes Mason build script. And it, the magic for cross-compilation is right here, these lines. So this targets 32-bit installation and it adds these extra compile arguments. Don't ask how I figured those out, but roughly these are the arguments needed for cross-compilation to work. And then Another key thing you need is a set of headers and libraries copied over from Visual Studio installation. So I have this image set up, winbuild.img, which is a FAT32 partition, and that's very, very important, I'm going to tell you why, which has these two directories, include and lib. Inside include, it has all these include directories, which have the headers inside them. And the lib has all these libraries, which have architectures and then the libraries inside them. Those are actual Windows libraries. This MSVCX64, this was copied from an MSVC installation. And I will put the paths in the description and on the screen. There are like two or three directories you need to copy things from. And you should just copy from there, assuming you have a Visual Studio installation. The final piece you need is this Clang directory right here. Especially the include files, otherwise you're not going to compile successfully. But this needs to be a Windows version of Clang matching your current version of Clang. So just go ahead and check your Clang version by running Clang dash dash version. And right here it goes Clang 12 for me. And you need to go to LLVM, find the LLVM release that matches your Clang installation and download the Windows installer so right here, 
we're targeting 32 bits. So install, download this, and you just need to open it in an archive manager. And what you need is to go to the lib clang 12, and these are the two directories that interest you. So it's going to be include clang, it's going to be this include, extract it, name it clang, and the lib, it's lib windows and these libraries. Where the magic happens, it's in the build script. This is slightly modified because I needed extra libraries. But essentially what I do here is I gather the MSVC directory, which is this Windows, Windows build directory right here. And I then pick the subdirectories to include like MSVC, UCRT, UM, shared, yada, yada, yada. And then I include them by joining the, the root, include, and the subpath. Then I do the same with libraries. There's only one library here, which is called Clang, and I join it right here. But then there is this BF library CPU, which does go to go goes to the same MSVC directory. It joins lib, it joins the subpath, and then it joins the CPU family. Because right here, if you just check right here in MSVC, it's got these subdirectories for the architectures. And you just gotta do the same thing. And then all in, all I did was essentially convert the the MSVC project to a me message script, which has like the buffer, etc. Like define the source files here, here, here. Then go ahead and compile a static library. <laughs> Don't mind the name. And then the executable, which has all the things. So if you just do compile with clang, point to the correct Windows build directory, and run the setup build script, which is on the modular repo, Windows release, and just run ninja, and it's just gonna compile perfectly. And the final thing about the fat image, why we need a fat image, is because Windows headers, these headers right here, especially the Windows ones. They're so bad, if they're, they don't work on case-sensitive file systems. It, they must be on a case-insensitive file system. So to set up a fat image, what you need to do is just run falcate, and it's like, I think it's NL 4G, for gib, whatever, and name.img and then mount the thing as writable, format it as FAT32, and then copy over the files. But but this is it. This was a very short video on cross-compilation for three people who might need it. I hope this helps you. And it took a while to get figure this out for modular, but I think this is a setup which works about as well as it can. It can even link with DirectX and all that stuff. You just need to have the libraries, the correct libraries, right, right here. And give a give a thumbs up, overflow the like button, because it helps the channel tremendously. And yeah, don't forget, my name is Heep. Yours wasn't defined. See ya.